Hi guys, it's Natalie with Books of a Feather. And since it's halfway through July, it's obviously time for our May-June book wrap-up. So for May and June, I read eight books, four library books, two ebooks, and two audiobooks. My first book of the month was The Fates Divide by Veronica Roth, which is the second in the duology of Carve the Mark. And for me, I gave this one three out of five stars. While I really enjoyed the first book, the second book seemed to get bogged down by the pacing. Some of that may have had to do with the fact that they were switching POVs right at exciting moments and then it would go right into something that was really slow because anytime anything really got moving, it stopped again and you'd have to start all over. They also added additional POVs in this book from the first book, which is fine. I didn't mind the character additions. It was just how often they were switched that really slowed the novel down as a whole for me. I won't get into the story too much since it is the second in a series, but I felt like it, it did end nicely. It gave us a good wrap up, but it just wasn't my favorite of the two books. My next book of the month was Stormborn by Rochelle Mead, which is book one in the Dark Swan series. Rochelle Mead is the author of the Vampire Academy series and its spin-offs, and then quite a few other urban fantasy, which I have read most of her stuff, but I hadn't read this series yet. But basically, I just needed something fun. It's urban fantasy, a little bit of smutty, and this first book was a great introduction to this new world. While it was a solid start, I did get this one three out of five, because I can just see that the series will probably grow a lot more as a whole, and I'll enjoy the later books a lot more. Next was Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli, which is a companion novel to Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. And while I know there's been a good amount of controversy on whether people like this one or not, I overall did enjoy it. It did have problematic elements that a lot of people have touched on in their reviews, specifically Leah's behavior in regards to some of the other characters, but I did feel like it was a good story and since there's so few books that have bisexual main characters, I was glad this came out because I'm really hoping more writers will have bisexual characters. So even though it wasn't perfect, I did give it four out of five stars. My next book is one I'd been looking forward to for a while, which was The Beauty of Darkness by Mary E. Pearson, which is book three in The Remnant Chronicles and also the finale to the series. I think this book did a good job of giving us answers and putting together a lot of the pieces that have been building through the first two books, but I did find the ending a bit rushed, actually, as it's not really a huge spoiler. There is a big battle that has been building throughout these books, and that actual battle seemed to happen very quickly, and I don't think it took up very many pages at all, at least not in comparison to the size of the book as a whole, which was disappointing for me. There were also a few points when the main character, Leah, had what I felt like were odd reactions to certain situations and certain characters that I felt should have been obvious given the political nature of some of their relationships. But even with those little criticisms, I still really liked it and felt it was a very good wrap up to the series. So this book got a four out of five stars. Next, I read Sparrow Hill Road by Shauna McGuire, which is book number one in her new Ghost Road series. It's a supernatural fantasy that follows a girl who is a hitchhiking road ghost, and we follow her throughout her afterlife, now that she is a ghost and also an urban legend. However, the person that caused her death is still out there, and when he starts turning up again, our main character Rose has to decide if she's willing to risk her afterlife to stop her killer. I felt the world building in this was really unique, so it got a good four out of five stars for me well. And I'm excited to read the sequel that comes out in July. After that, I read The Bells by Danielle Clayton, which I have an entire review of, so I'm not going to talk much about that, but I gave it three out of five stars, and I will link the whole book review down below. And last, we have my audiobooks for the month. The first audiobook I listened to was Authority by Jeff Vandermeer, which is book number two in the Southern Reach trilogy. The first book being Annihilation, which is also has a movie adaptation now. I was a huge fan of book one, but unfortunately book two is kind of let me down. While I did end up giving it three out of five, it was mostly for the last maybe a quarter of the book because the first three quarters was really, really slow. And while I did have some of that creepy, mysterious vibe of book one, a lot of it was a lot of like inner office politics, which is just so different from the first book that I wasn't expecting it at all. And I also don't think I liked the audiobook narrator very much, so that definitely didn't help. But mostly, while it did advance the story a bit, I felt like 
I don't know, it didn't need three quarters of the book focused on this office politics stuff that didn't really end up seeming to matter very much when all the exciting action happened in the last quarter and what seems to be really advancing what's going to be in book three. So while I didn't enjoy this one quite as much, I'm definitely going to read book three because I just need to know what happens and more about the mysterious Area X. Finally, I listened to Curtsies and Conspiracies by Gail Carriger, which is number two in her Finishing School series. I'd read the first book in this series quite a few years ago, and at that time the other books hadn't come out yet, and I finally got around to picking these up because I saw they were available at my library as an audiobook. I was looking for something just kind of fun and lighthearted, and this is a steampunk fantasy where the girls are basically in a intelligentsia, slight bit of assassin Victorian England school. If you're familiar with the author's Parasol Protectorate series. It's similar to that, but more a little bit more YA. Basically, they're just a lot of fun. I like the narrator. They're cute. They have a little bit of a mystery. It is just something really great that I can listen to as an audiobook because I think I prefer things that aren't super heavy or intense because I mostly listen to them while I'm driving and it's easier for me to focus on both at once that way. In addition for me this month, um, some TV shows I've really been enjoying have been the new season of The 100, which is, I really think, one of the best sci-fi shows on TV right now, which is surprising actually because it is on the CW, which while I like them, they are a bit soapy, but this is very intense, like Game of Thrones level of like killing off characters. And speaking of intense shows, I've also been watching The Handmaid's Tale new season, and oh my gosh, I have to like prepare myself to watch that because it is just, ooh, a little too scary, close to home sometimes with some some of the political climate we've got going on and there's just some really heart-wrenching stuff this season and I'm excited to see how they end the season and where they're gonna go because all of season two has been off book from the source material by Margaret Atwood even though she is kind of involved in the show I believe but it's still all new material so it's been interesting to watch the story and the world of Gilead expand some more fun shows RuPaul's Drag Race of course just lots of fun. Gotta watch it. Won't spoil it in case you haven't seen who the winner is, but probably shouldn't be on the internet if you haven't, so. There's also a new season of Face Off, which is a special effects makeup show on sci-fi, and I actually am a makeup artist in my not booktube life, and while I don't do special effects makeup, it's still a lot of fun to see the artists create, and I've watched every single season so far, so how to get on there. Some Netflix shows I've been really enjoying have been Queer Eye Season 2, which very exciting. They've announced Queer Eye Season 3. It's filming in my city that I'm in right now, Kansas City, so that'll be a lot of fun. Maybe we'll see them around town. That would be cool, but that'll be an extra excitement when Season 3 comes out to see it actually in your city. I've also just been as downtime fun watching Nailed It, which is like a baking show where everybody is not a professional baker, and they fail extravagantly every time which is just great makes you feel a little bit better about your own skills on some of these shows <laughs> it's just funny and lighthearted, and they don't take themselves too seriously the judges are fun they don't take it too seriously so it's just it's a good time and finally I watched The Forest which is a mystery miniseries originally produced in France about girls that start to go missing in a small French village and how it might connect to similar disappearances of girls 10 years ago. I really enjoy like British murder mysteries or there's been a few like supernatural type mysteries or detective shows. Now I love binging those. They're a little creepy, a little scary, even better. So if you have any good recommendations on that, please let me know because I'm always looking for more. But yeah, that's basically been my May and June wrap up. If you've read or watched any of these, please let me know your thoughts and if you have any recommendations for similar things you think I should check out. Otherwise, as always, you can hit the subscribe button to see more content, and you can follow me on my other social media via Twitter and Goodreads. I hope you had a great reading month too, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!